ready? You never know. All right. Well, it's a fucking exciting day for Stevenson Ranch. I'll tell you that. We got Evan Britton in the house. One one thing I want to say before we even let you speak is that this is kind of how I opened up uh, our our dialogue together. Huge. You're talking to a huge hot boxing fan. You're talking to a guy who's become a huge fan of you through that. And uh, I mean, dude, you know, I don't know. We talked about this last night a little bit. I don't know what it says about me exactly. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of things. Like I, I appreciate and enjoy everything when I'm there and I'm watching it or whatever, but I'm not like drawn to follow and, under, and like be in it so much. I think maybe, you know, it's because we have our own things going on or whatever, but became a diehard fan. And uh, just to set the floor, I was sitting right there with Blue about a week ago, watching the new season of Hot Boxing and you weren't there. And I said, this is fucking horseshit. And I literally DM'd Evan. and I would never spoke. You didn't even know of my existence, probably. Um, and I just hit him up, and I told him the shit. I was like, this is fucked up. And then I was like, "You got if you ever want to come out here, I'm in Montana. Got a nice little spot out here with some extra room. And the fucking guy hopped in his car and came out. Now, wanna set the, I want to set the story up because it's a good one. <laughs> Offered, you know, like, hey, we're gonna, we'll get some flights out here, you know, roll out here. He's like, you know what? There wasn't really ideal flights. He's like, we're going to take the road trip. And like right away, I was like, oh, of course he's a road trip guy, you know, <laughs> says so much, <laughs> says so much about him, and uh, just completely aligned with the guy I thought you were. And uh, you've had a doozy of a of a trip getting here, my man. I'm happy you're here. Welcome. Yeah, man. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. It's such a, it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, when you reached out to me, it's just been a frenzy on social media, yeah. YouTube being hit up by fans, everything happening. It's so interesting because, you know, it's Mike's show. Yeah. And I, my main role in there has been the facilitator, create this space so that Mike can share his heart and soul. Yeah. You know, and that's what's so compelling about the show. So for this all to be unfolding the way it is, and we'll get into the hot box and stuff, but yeah. for the fans to, it's been super humbling I've, i'm so grateful um it's kind of the the pat on the back i feel i was craving for a little while mm. just knowing that you're appreciated yeah you know absolutely um and then when you hit me up dude i rarely i i it's weird because i get so many messages yeah but I can't even really tell you the reason why I open certain ones and I don't. In the same way. It's just like an energy thing. I'm gravitated, boom, just Mike mm -hmm. sent you a Who the DM. fuck is this guy? Yeah. And it was just really honest. Yeah. You know, what you said. And I checked you out and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, I love this. And then you sent me your episode with Johnny. Yeah. And I really, his whole story really resonates with me and everything you, you were really going after in that episode really resonated with me so i was like fuck yeah dude yeah. this is a cosmic connection yeah and coming here dude i feel like we've known each other for lifetimes i know you said that last night i'm like dude i feel the exact same way you know like i feel yeah. like we've known each other forever i knew it was gonna be like that weirdly though i think i said that to you Blue. i was like we're gonna we're gonna be fucking i know we're just gonna be yeah we're pure boys, homies. like for yeah. life yeah know? for sure you know um it's interesting you know you talk about like the cosmic identity of the whole thing because like i've told you this and i've actually said it in podcasts with johnny that we've already filmed um that we're doing a ball don't lie podcast uh i with, love that name by the yeah, way thank yeah thank you man and um we're doing a podcast and it's inspired by you and, and and mike because there was there was a in my mind being very you know having the seat that i have next to johnny i liken it very much so to your seat next to mike in a lot of ways i could tell yeah. by the relationship and i'm just like man one i think people are very surprised <laughs> by mike and, and his emotional side and how you know his lens on a lot of things and i know for a fact people would feel the same way about johnny yeah if they got that access most people just associate johnny with being like a douchey like you know th the whole stigma of that party guy you know and yeah. there's been many actions of his that have transcended that and he knows that but he the thing with this is like I used to send him 
we had this idea for a while. I like, and I was just like, when you're ready, you tell me, we'll do this. Mm. And it was a life thing. Like he had to get there. Mm. And I would send him fucking hotboxing episodes. I'm like, watch this shit. Because the, the honesty is just so, it's just pouring through what's happening. You know what I mean? And it's just, honesty to me is like freedom. You know, like I yeah. think it let's just, if you're honest, well, if you can be honest with yourself and honest with other people, then you're free of like a lot of pain. And it's, it was just really inspiring. So it's interesting. Yeah. Johnny should get here tomorrow. There's our fucking fire is roaring. <laughs> it's roaring. It's a machine gun. gun. We got a backwoods coming in. Hot. Oh, wow. Backwood. Put it in my bread basket and I drop it. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Versace deserves a shout out for his facilitation. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, that was uh, Johnny should be here tomorrow, but Johnny's like the fucking Phantom of the Opera. He's yeah, not here until he's here. And then if he's there, he still might not be there. He might <laughs> duck out the back and fucking teleport out of there. It's all um, good, dude. I get it, man. Yeah. I'm like that, too. I mean, so you invited us. Uh, you invited me up. You said, Eb, I'll buy you flight. I want you to come out, do the podcast. I'd love to have you here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And then the next day you hit me up and you said, hey, man, I can't find any direct flights. Is that cool? And I thought about it for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to make this a fucking road trip. Yeah. You know? I got my dude Alon. Alon, shout out to Alon. Alon is yeah. the original director and editor of Hot Boxing. Yep. The mastermind behind the black and white, the cinematic look and feel, the whole thing. We named the shit together. Um, I mean, I think it was Alon and our other partner, Dennis, who came up with the name. And Shout um, out, Dennis. Shout out to Dennis. Um, but we're doing some cool shit now, and this was a great opportunity. Catch this wave, man. Come catch you these know. waves, baby. Catch this wave, dude. Mm -hmm. Things with hot boxing started kind of. People started asking questions. Eb, are you going to be on season three? Eb, are you going to be on season three? What's going on? They heard some video from Henry Cejudo where he talked about being a, a part time co host on hot box. And I think that sparked this. I didn't even know about that. But for the last couple of months, my inbox has just been flooded with these questions. So, sec. End of the first week of January, so three weeks ago, you know me, I'm super spiritual. Absolutely. I meditate, I talk we'll to God. We'll get into that a lot. Yeah, we'll get it, yeah. Um, I had driven out to Tucson to spend some time with my dad, get some, get some clarity, get a little space for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm praying, I'm meditating, and all of a sudden it just comes to me like, Eb, you gotta do a video about this. You gotta send a message to the fans. You have to acknowledge these questions. Yeah. First of all, I thought to myself, hot boxing, they're never going to acknowledge this. Just Absolutely. knowing what I know about them, they're just not going to acknowledge this, these questions from the fans. Mm -hmm. Worst case, they could acknowledge it and say, hey, Eb said, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Eb said, I'm not interested in doing this podcast unless you give me fucking, I don't know, a million dollars. Right. Or you know? Mm -hmm. So I wanted, to, I wanted to just set the, set the truth out there. And uh, I did this video on top of this mountain in Arizona. It turned out pretty epic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've had to acknowledge the situation, or, you know, they've been really put under the, the spotlight of what's going on here. They've got Jeremy Piven co hosting it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you sent me the thing and this is just like you know i've felt for a long time i love mike to death i he's my soul brother like you mm -hmm. said you know mm -hmm. we've been he was so influential and inspiring for me in my own healing journey in life after the nfl i learned so much from him and watching him go through everything and come to terms with himself you know in the process yeah I'm coming to terms with myself. There's a, weirdly, a lot of Mike's story resonates with me. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people can. It's yeah. no one can relate to the right <laughs> to the level. Yeah, or, you right. Know, but there's there's uh, the core values of what he's, <clears throat> what he's getting across. I mean, I, I know exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we're like, let's let's hop in a car, Alon. Let's shoot. Let's make this a work road trip, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna drive up from L.A. to Montana. I was like, we'll do it in two days. Yeah. Yeah, Tuesday night. 
<laughs> it's an 18 hour drive by the way so the first day we get in the car about noon roll out of la we're flying through the desert dude fly through vegas get up into the utah across the utah state line going through these unbelievable caverns yeah just past St. George, Utah, all of a sudden, dude, it's like a f- out of nowhere. Like God turned on a snow machine and it's blankets of snow. Two, three inches of snow accumulating quickly on the ground. Fresh powder. Mm-hmm. Cars are pulling off left and right. It's pitch black outside. Semis are coming to a halt. We're like, yeah. We have four hours because we our plan was to get to Salt Lake City. Right. <laughs> our plan was to Shots get to fired. Salt Lake City, and we had four more hours to go. I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way. I mean, if we have four hours of this, <laughs> we I don't know if we're gonna make it. We're in a tiny BMW, dude. You're like six eleven too. Yeah, we so <laughs> in sort of a in a a, a knee jerk reaction, we. Alon's like, should I get off? I'm like, yeah, let's get off. Assess the situation. We pull off, get off in this exit. Immediately, it's like this was a mistake because there's four inches of powder on the ground untouched. You can't tell what's road, what's the ditch, where we are. And so I go, I got to get us a new Airbnb. Really quick, I look on Airbnb. I book us the first thing that's in the closest city, which is Cedar City, 30 miles out. How fucking funny is that? That's where I, I recently got arrested there. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I got a warrant out it's there. It's the hold-up town, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's so funny. How weird. Out yeah, of anywhere. I know. Cedar City. Cedar City. Yeah, I was in the fucking big house over there in Cedar yeah, City oh for about my three God, hours. Mike. It's insanity, dude. I had a great run over there. Shout out Cedar City. Good Shout time. out Cedar City. It was... Dude, it was a godsend for us. I hit this guy up, last minute booking. I'm like, hey, I call him up. I said, hey, brother, we're uh, <laughs> on our way to Salt Lake City, but this wind, this storm is yeah. taking us over. He, he texts me. He's like, how's the weather there? I'm like, oh, it's fucking awesome, That's man. It's clear as day. <laughs> yeah. uh, but about, <laughs> I don't know, maybe 10 miles from there, all of a sudden, I see through and there's fucking blue sky. I can see the mountain silhouette. And then we pull through and it's like coming into Montana. It's totally clear. There you go. Take a deep breath, dude. And we rolled in here. Got here about 3 o'clock yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, dude, it's just like coming here as we went through hell to get to heaven. And I'm closer to myself. I'm closer to God. Ilan and I are fucking brothers for life forged in battle i love that was part of this this journey for you guys thank you so much dude like this is you know i feel like this is really the beginning of some a really special time absolutely you know absolutely we uh dude i'd said it to you i mean i've had guests i've had some cool guests i don't really i'm i was genuinely like very excited like Evan gets here today, guys. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited, man. I'm, I'm, I'm super, uh, super grateful you made the trip. I'm a huge believer in a lot of. I feel like I know you because I've seen so many of these. Granted, you know the show is about Mike, and you made a point earlier. Facilitating was a really good word you used. Um, have, where does that come from? Where you have that skill set? I mean, you're really, really fucking good at facilitating, like for real. Um, and it's. I mean, I want to get into it a little bit. It's just yeah. such a challenge to deal with the you know volatility of a Mike Tyson where he's just so fucking, he is who he is. He's a yeah. fucking one of one, you know, yeah. like nothing comparable to who he is and how he acts and just how crazy his life has been and his life is even currently. So being uh, plugged into that room, um, I mean, a good question is, is like, where were you at personally with him when you started the podcast? Were you already just on a tidal wave with him? Like, you guys were already really close? Or have you... Because it feels like, you know, I think you might have that capability just with who you are and your energy is just, like, being able to connect with people on a... If, if it's right, uh-huh. you can connect and it can elevate quickly. Yeah. Um, but it just feels like you've known him your whole life and feels like he really can 
really trust you and like you know yeah very much on the same wavelength albeit very different mm -hmm. um where like how did that actually play out in the sense of were you really buddies with him before this and it just made so much sense or it's an insane i mean it's insane man you know the whole the trajectory of it um coming out of the nfl i very organically fell into cannabis advocacy mm -hmm. talking about how cannabis is probably the most potent healing tool for football players especially you got some healing coming good. your I'm, way i'm good brother good? thank you yeah i'm good right now thank you thank you um just Sorry. a quick thing on why is cannabis so important for football players or any combat yeah. sports athletes? Mm -hmm. um, cannabinoids, the chemical compounds found in the cannabis plant, are the most powerful neuroprotectant and antioxidant maybe on the planet. Mm -hmm. Our federal government has a patent on cannabinoids as neuroprotectants and antioxidants patent 6,630,507. You check that out, go online, look at it. They've done studies and seen through scientific research that the, these chemical compounds, cannabinoids, go into your brain, can help protect them before damage occurs, and they can help heal the brain after damage has occurred. When was that patent, when was that patent uh, you know, actually permitted? When, like, when did they get that? When did they I acquire think that in patent? The, in the 70s sometime, in the 70s. Isn't it crazy that... They, the feds yeah. know that. Yeah. They, they create that patent, probably forecasting that at some point it would become, you know, a huge business. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time running a media campaign, schmear on, on, can of, on weed and just how it's, and it's not crazy. to mention, not to mention, you know, really implementing and imposing criminal penalty for yeah. it. When you know as a government entity that it's actually really helpful yeah, in, a a, lot, in ways, you know. It's a mind fuck yeah you know it really is because here we are the 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 federal government categorizes cannabis as a schedule one narcotic which means it has no medicinal value whatsoever so you can't even research it legally mm -hmm. without going through rigmarole and jumping through hoops with the government to get you know licenses etc to grow and research it mm -hmm. study it it's very very rare i mean up until recently only Ole miss had the they had like the government sanctioned study on campus. Mm -hmm. so that's a whole other thing so then what this this was a huge part in my turning point because i used cannabis as a throughout my football career mm -hmm. you know i so believe you were just on that wave you were aware of its of its aid yeah and you know we talked a little bit about this last night but i really come from this family of of yogis and and mystics and people who are very in tune with holistic healing practices you know growing up it was drink plenty of water eat the right foods get plenty of exercise uh, before you go to a doctor to be prescribed something mm -hmm. you know it's like your body knows the way if you give it the right tools mm -hmm. use whatever natural means are available before going you know and doing. Right. so i always kind of gravitated towards cannabis even as a kid like even plant medicine in general mm -hmm. um so and then intuitively through my football career dealing with a lot of pain dealing with a lot of injuries constantly in pain you know and cannabis was the one thing i i realized i could smoke some cannabis after a long day of the grind i could get a good night's sleep i could wake up the next day feeling rejuvenated so i just kept following my intuition with that at the same time, I was a team captain. I was always sort of the golden child of all the teams I played on. Mm. So for me, it was it was terrifying to think that what if coaches found out I'm a stoner, you know? That would fuck up my whole credibility. Interesting. You know, so I kept my cannabis use super private. Um, so coming out of my career, when I got into cannabis advocacy and I started telling my story about how I feel like cannabis really helped me heal, and kept me in better shape in my life after football. Mm -hmm. When I heard that the federal government had this patent on cannabinoids, I was just like, Whoa. That's crazy. It blew my mind. And then I learned about we all have this thing called an endocannabinoid system in our bodies. 
where our bodies are built to interact with this plant. Mm. Not only that, we produce our own cannabinoids, one in particular called anandamide, which is the bliss molecule. Ananda is the Sanskrit word for bliss. We create this to facilitate all sorts of processes from appetite, mood, sleep rhythms, um, and how we feel and deal with pain. Mm. So I started on this cannabis advocacy journey. I was doing it for about four years, started a CBD company, left it, did a lot of speaking around the country, formed an organization called Athletes for Care, Mm. which is a bunch of pro athletes from NFL, NHL, NBA, MLB, UFC, Olympians, who all share this common story Mm. of cannabis as medicine either healing us during our careers as an alternative to the opiates and all the bullshit, all the pill bullshit, mm-hmm. or as a as being an aid in the transition into life after sports. Right. So, you know, that's a that's a whole other pod in itself, just what <laughs> happened, but I get this phone call. You know, and I'd done a lot of writing. Um, and I felt like I really alienated myself from my NFL community. You know, I felt like doing that, stepping out in that way, speaking my truth in this, in, you know, what I went through during my NFL career and what worked for me to get out of it or to reestablish myself in life after. I felt like I just kind of alienated all the people that I grew up with, my high school coaches. I was like, now everybody knows I was like a fucking, you know, Same. stoner, mm. you know? Interesting. But then I get this phone call, and it's one of my former NFL team doctors. And he goes, Eb, I've been following you since you left here. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you really look like one of the, the leaders in this movement of cannabis for athletes. He's like, I'm even, I'm not prescribing guys opiates anymore because i see the destruction Mm -hmm. it's causing with them Mm -hmm. i'm coming out to la next week for a medical cannabis summit being put on by mike tyson and his cannabis company i'm like oh no shit and i'd been around the cannabis block for like four years and felt like i knew just about all the big players in it Mm -hmm. i never knew mike was even in it so i'm like okay cool i love that dude mike Mm -hmm. tyson He says, yeah, I want to introduce you to them because I think you could do a lot with these guys. Mm. So I get introduced to Mike's partner, and he says, Eb, uh, I got to put on this medical cannabis summit next week. I need your help. I was like, okay. I need you to come into the office, and uh, I'll pay you to, to put this thing together, whatever you need. Um, I just need your help, and it sounds like you're the guy. So I'm like, cool. He 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 also goes, uh, later I'm gonna FaceTime you so you can meet meet Mike and he can know you're cool. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so later that day, I'm getting out of the gym and this dude FaceTimes me with Mike and they're in some cigar lounge smoking weed and Mike's stoned <laughs> out of his mind and he's like, what's up, Batman? I'm like hey brother how are you man it's good to meet you mike he's like good man good and i'm like hey dude i'm i'm really excited i'm gonna help you put on a great event you know because mm-hmm. i've done a ton of these panels i just know how to do it mm-hmm. and i had the athletes and the people and the connections so i was like man it's gonna be great and rob his partner goes okay 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 i'll talk to you later Ed. you know and hangs up so friday I go in there i basically pitched the whole company and i hadn't met mike in person yet this is all a long way to say how Mike and I's relationship began. But I go in there. I give basically this spiel to the entire company. I tell them what we need to do, the format of it, the athletes we want to bring in, neuroscientists, uh, team doctors, team owners we had at this thing. Mm-hmm. I let them take care of all the media personnel and the coverage they wanted to do of it. But... Mike isn't there yet. And then all of a sudden, I've kind of finished my spiel. And all of a sudden, I start hearing these whispers like, Mike's here. Mike's here. Mike's here. Mike's here. Yep. And it's like you could feel the energy. 
It was like Hercules was coming into the building. Yeah, he's literally a tidal wave. A fucking into... demigod is like coming in. And they, they're like, everybody out of the room. Give us privacy. Yeah, but I want you to stay. So I'm like, okay. So I sit there. In walks Mike Tyson. And just his energy, you know. His ener- he, he was almost encased in a black cloud, you know. But I still, I saw him, you know, I saw him and I said, hey, Mike, it's great to meet you, man. I'm Evan. And he gave me a hug first right away, you know, and I was like, God, mm. the fuck, man. Like all like right away, it was like I felt his heart. I felt his humility. I felt him as a human being. And I just always treated him like that. You mm. know, a lot of people around Mike. They treat him as this thing. They put him up on the pedestal. They treat him as something otherworldly. Yeah. And I always just approached him as my brother, as a human being, you know. And uh, I think that's why he just he felt so comfortable around me. What year was this when you met him? This was twenty. This was twenty eighteen, May of twenty eighteen. Wow. Yeah. So it just escalated right in, you know. Yeah, man, and then, you know, there was some, uh, I, they brought me, I put on this cannabis summit, it goes great, have a bunch of, it's amazing, it was a really good piece Mm -hmm. we did, they basically say, hey, we want you to stick around, we'll pay you, be our, be a consultant for us, Mm -hmm. bring us your cannabis contacts, et cetera, um, we just want you around. We love your energy, and we think you're good for this mm-hmm. place. I was like, okay, cool. At the time, I had another podcast with one of my former, with a former NFL guy named Nate Jackson, who's okay. a, he's a best-selling author, wrote a, one of the best football books ever called Slow Getting Up. I highly recommend it if you're interested in that. Mm. Um, we had a podcast called the Mindful Warrior Podcast. So I was I was really interested in that. I had a radio show in Jacksonville called The Number 73 on NPR uh, where I do playlists of music mixed with poems and poetry readings and excerpts from books, and I'd create a theme, mm. and I'd do a nightly show. So you have this, <clears throat> I mean, you, talked, you, you referenced it a little bit, and you talked about it a little bit more at length last night about having some like real spirituality intertwined with your family tree and just yeah um higher dimensional you know just outer world so in, in some ways you feel like it's just like innately in you this you know like it's it sound it feels like it's just so organically you um but is it was there a shift after football was there something that pushed you deeper i mean i i understand that it's a constant evolution and right. you know ebbs and flows but is, do you feel like it's what'd you say ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows yeah. boom there you go um yeah that's hard uh you know the weaving in and out like it feels like it's innately in you would you say that's that's just something that you were always like yeah yeah i mean from the time i was a little kid i knew there was this blueprint for my life like there was a higher power and intelligence moving through that's, that's me nuts. and everything oh. and uh you know I had this mind's eye vision to play in the NFL. And I just naturally started, like, looking back, I go, wow, dude, I was manifesting that reality without even really understanding the tools or the the practice of manifestation, you know? I kept this vision in my mind's eye so strong. I knew what it felt like, smelled like, what it was going to be like, taste like to be in the NFL. And then my body just started doing the shit, you know. And I was surrounded by great people, too. You know, my mom taking me to yoga classes when I was 12, you know. On top of the weight training and on top of football. It was like my body, she, my body became so resilient and strong and flexible. It was like everything I ate, how I carried myself. It was all in alignment with achieving this dream, you know. And um, what was... Th- where did the dream come from? It was just something you were drawn to immediately. I want to be in the NFL. Was it a family? Was, did your parents, was there? My family is interesting because it's a lot of, it's this kind of yin and yang of athletes and artists. That's great. Yeah, it was, it was perfect. I'm so 
blessed, man. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's, of course, like we all have our darkness and there was a lot of dark times during my childhood, parents getting divorced, a lot of dealing with alcoholism and, mm -hmm. and shit like that. Um, but I remember I was probably seven or eight years old. I was at my grandparents' house in Connecticut watching, it was the summer, watching like the late morning news or so, or whatever the news was before like Price is Right came on. Hmm. And uh, they're showing clips of the Jets and Giants training camp. And I just thought to myself, I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to be like one of those gladiators. Yeah. And my mom would never let me play. She always was worried I'd get hurt. So finally, my freshman year of high school was the first year I stepped on the football field, and it was just like a rocket ship from there. You know, yeah. It's it's uh, why are you so big? Your family, you're my dad's big six dude. six, but he was a D one basketball player, okay, so, so he was like two hundred yeah. pounds. My mom is five two, wow, but is has like a gymnast physique, so she's like super strong and right. powerful. So you got so like I got a perfect, perfect mix. blend. You know, I got the broad shoulders of my mom and i got the height of my dad yeah yeah so i was physically gifted man and i just took that vision and applied the two and you know made it um shit got pretty hairy in the nfl a lot of pain a lot of serious injuries yeah herniated disc in my back had back surgery 11 weeks after surgery get an infection in the disc which puts me on eight weeks of intravenous antibiotics. I, I was basically paralyzed from the waist down. Wow. I couldn't walk around my house. Um, still came back from that. I was like, fuck it, I'll come back. Came back the next year. Mm. Um, but that took a lot out of me, the back injury in particular. Shoulder surgery, back surgery, handful of concussions, torn muscles all over my body. But I was in that warrior mindset. Yeah. You know? Like I'm gonna do. This is what I do. How different? How different? Would you? Would you? Once you look back at that and you think about your psyche, how? Was, how much of a challenge was that? Being like, I mean, literally in the trenches, you yeah. know, do your position exactly yeah. is in yeah. the trenches, and for X amount of time in your life as you're developing as a man and a human, but you also have this spiritual aspect that's innately in you. How were you able to navigate that? Was how you know how difficult was that? It got numbed a lot through that experience. The spirituality know? did. Yeah, yeah, and that connection to myself. At the end of the day, you know, higher power, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, it's like it's a deep connection to yourself. You know, we were talking about it last night. Mm -hmm. Like. It's not always clear, but if you're willing to just follow the guideposts of, okay, here I am, how does this feel? Is this good or do I feel sort of off here? And maybe you do something that you think is really fun for a long time until all of a sudden one day you wake up and you go, oh, I'm not really, this isn't right. Or it's not right anymore. So you kind of course correct and you go this way. The pivots. Yeah, always, man. And that's... You know, talking to some of the most successful people in the world I've ever met, Mike Tyson in particular, dude. Mm. Just, like, constantly be willing to fucking surrender, let it all go, kill everything that you've ever known in yourself. Let it die. And just come, be have the courage to take another step forward, you know? The ego death. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, couldn't think of a sport that would invoke your ego any more than what you what you did. You know, like the yeah, other than combat, boxing, right? I mean, boxing, yeah, but like it's not every play, every second right. pushing, and like there's yeah. a lot of waiting and training, and uh -huh, it's uh -huh. just like you're constantly like in the trenches, just getting pushed around, pushing yeah. people around, yeah, fighting your, you know, your own body half the time. Yeah. Body. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! I get, I talk to, uh, I become good buddies with Patrick Willis, mm -hmm. um, who's an unbelievable dude, yeah. and. He asked me to come and give a talk at this this football player summit he puts on now where it's like NFL guys coming back to give back with tools they've learned. You could do a little hour-long talk on whatever you want. I did it on meditation and breath work today. You're a huge advocate of that. It's my, you know, it's cannabis, meditation, breath work, exercise, nutrition. My book, The Ebb and Flow, Basic Tools to Transform Your Life, is going to drop this year 
I love that. Yeah, man. And love uh, that. I'm about keeping it simple, dude. But, you know, breath work and meditation, I was talking to somebody about that exact thing. We spend so much time in football overriding the natural pain mechanism of your body. You wake up most days and you're like, I can't do shit. <laughs> my neck hurt. I can't turn my head. My ankle hurts. I can't push off my leg. I got to go block 300 pound dudes who are trying to kill me. Okay, we'll do what we got to do. Pop some pills, tape it up, do so whatever it takes. Was that, that was the number one recipe for it? Just, and is that, the, is that the, a constant throughout the league? Just that's how it is. People yeah. Just, just... yeah, I mean, every guy, 98% of guys in an NFL locker room are on some prescription anti-inflammatory or another daily, a daily regimen. It makes sense. Cataflam, Indocin. Uh, Celebrex, this shit just wreaks I havoc. I play fucking beer you. pong and drink beers and I wake <laughs> yeah, up sore. Yeah, yeah. No shit, dude. No <laughs> shit. So you're on, yeah, I mean, you're taking that just to get through meetings. So you go practice, you know? What a grind. Fuck. Yeah, so you're constantly overriding that. So think about that, man. Every day you're overriding your body's natural mechanisms for 10 plus years. You wake up one day and you're like, I don't know what I'm feeling. Yeah. I don't even know who I am anymore, you know? And I felt like I was lucky because I kind of always had this underlying current of I'm going to be a writer when I'm done playing. Yeah. I went to Arizona, majored in creative writing, and I really, I don't know, somewhere along the line, I got a, you know, a lot of writers in my family. Yeah. But I was like, I love writing. I love storytelling, you know? So even with that kind of underlying ideal for myself and my life after sports coming out of football was still brutal you know i came out i remember waking up one day we had just bought this house in la moved my family back there from chicago we knew it was done i woke up one day and i'm like i'm 28 years old i don't even know what the fuck i've done with my life here i am i played six years in the nfl dude mm. like a lot of people would go that's a great life yeah you know? absolutely and here i am going i feel like i've done nothing mm. you know and who am i what am i gonna do with myself how am i gonna make money you know there's a like a year-long stretch 18 months where my wife was just starting she's an attorney god bless her i mean she's a total badass and has really taken the reins on the breadwinning side of things and life after yeah football started her own practice but that took wow. some time to get going yeah and it's given me this wonderful buffer of getting to figure it out for a minute and here i am i think you know what are we five or six years out of my nfl career yeah you know this is where i want to be man doing podcasts putting the message out there yeah helping people heal we'll be right back with you never know you know what i mean right after this urination break John Kilmer here with a fantastic new product. Today we're talking about an all-natural anytime energy supplement by our friends at RSP Nutrition who are changing the game. Now, fellas, speaking as someone who's been jack and iron for about 10 years now, I've taken a lot of sketchy pre-workout supplements and a lot of sketchy energy supplements. Now, what separates RSP Nutrition's amino lean is that one, it's got zero calories. Two, it's got zero sugar and it has all natural ingredients. The energy you're getting from this come from green tea. That's it. Uh, and on top of that, it's weight loss management, it's mental focus. So if, if you're a guy that has respect for his mind, and a guy that has respect for his body, and a guy who likes to fuck on the weekends, this product's for you. We have a very special offer for you today. If you go to rspnutrition.com and use promo code YNK at checkout, you're going to get 20% off your entire order. Now, this thing is crushing it on Amazon right now. There are just endless and endless five-star reviews, but you're going to get a better offer if you go to rspnutrition.com and use promo code YNK to get 20% off your entire order. Fellas, this thing has been replacing my morning coffee. Even on days I'm not working out, uh, I use it for mental focus. I use it for muscle recovery. It really is an all-in-one, and I highly suggest you use it. Tell them Steve sent you.
I have no doubt in my fucking mind that this is this is the trajectory or this is the path. Yeah. I mean, do you have that knowing? Do you, uh, I mean, I'm sure you do. There's even I feel like that's that's kind of something that the people that actually do transcend the hard times and those rough patches where it's really easy to turn around and just oh, be yeah. like, I'm gonna go Dude, retreat every day. to something, <laughs> every day. you know? Yeah. Yeah. But like that knowing of just like there's a knowingness that comes. I feel like um, yeah. when when you can at least feel like the right things are flowing to me, you know, and like you being a podcaster. I mean, I said it to you last night. Like, I don't think you understand. Like, well, it sounds like you already knew you wanted to be a writer. I didn't know any of this, so it makes a lot of sense because you have a lot of those traits. Uh -huh. You know, like yeah. the way you speak and yeah. even the pacing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like yeah. I'm about a fireside chat with an author. You know, like, I love but it, but that's really it's no doubt in my mind that it feels like you're exactly where you're supposed to be yeah. profession wise and direction yeah. wise yeah for now sure. i mean i don't know how much you want to get into it um but I, I you know this is what i said to you last night and like kind of my main message to you is like dude i don't think you have an understanding of like how big your following is from that platform uh -huh. because you know like you said you're facilitating you know but like if you become a fan it's like the Mike and Evan show. Like uh -huh. it's an A and a B and you might not even say fucking 10 words, but like the words you do say, it's facilitating Mike's like imploding and like the guest has no <laughs> idea what's going on. If you weren't there, who knows where the fuck that goes? Like, yeah. or the feeling of it uh -huh. where like you'd be able to be like, yeah, man, you know, like just <laughs> be able to bring it back to fucking right in the middle again, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I think um, you... <clears throat> one shouldn't doubt anything like your approach to what you're doing i think it's spot on that's why i called you out here i feel like i had a fucking like a, like i'm a i'm a recruiter you know and i had like that guy's like one of the in my opinion you're one of the best at what you do really genuinely so it's just about where it flows to next but i think right now is a really interesting time yeah because they're coming out with the new season yeah and i'll be you don't you don't have to say it because you, you're very affiliated but like it went from being my favorite content to like i can't really sit through it Mm. and i would never have said that with any other episodes we always laugh like this is great content you know like yeah, there's yeah. just something so organic about it you creative genius <laughs> or, who like pushes in so close on mike's mouth that you could see him foaming just the passion the energy <laughs> what he's his message he's trying to get across it's just really really creatively well done and um but i think all that being said uh, a lot of people are feeling the exact same way. Yeah. And this is a really interesting time for you. Yeah. I mean, how much do you want to share us a little bit of what's where you are and what's what's going on next even? Um, but yeah. I think there's, you started this by saying, I wanted to address, you know, you don't want them to c control the narrative. Yeah. Because there's an opportunity, there's, an, there's yeah. an opening for that. If it, Who knows <clears throat> if that were to occur or not. But you kind of at least setting your side clear um, I think this is a cool opportunity to at least know, have an idea of what's going on yeah. and then where you are like mentally, you know, where we are next, what's, what's next on your, you know, this next plan of action and continuing this direction you're going, albeit if it's not going to be with hot boxing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to acknowledge some sadness about it, some anger about it. Because I feel like this is really our baby that we created, that we birthed into the world. And it was something really special. Obviously, it was really culturally significant. It was. Know? And it's really important for people like Mike to voice their truth and the the things that they've gone through. Because that really helps people heal, you know. People who, you know, very few people experience those highs and those lows that Mike Tyson has experienced. He's had meteoric, stratospheric highs and literally hellfire lows. Um, yeah. And he's willing to be honest about it, like where he was, what happened. Open you know? book honesty. Yeah. Like without a doubt. And that's super healing because people go, wow. I've been killing myself my whole life because of this thing that happened to me. I did, and I feel just horrible about it, you know? And I don't know what to do with it. I feel ashamed. I feel guilty. I feel yeah. grief-stricken, you know? And here's this guy who's opening it up, and it's like, it's okay, man. 
you know, it's okay. It's really powerful. And um, I take a lot of pride in having been a part of that journey with Mike. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a bummer because I love Mike so much, but he's surrounded by people who have other ideas about how things should be, you know. And it would be one thing if I got a call one day and they said, Ev, we don't want you to host the show anymore. But in fact, it's been, yeah, yeah, we'd love to have Ev back. But literally every step of the way in the quote-unquote negotiation process, it's been literally, I can't even really tell you the, the, the negotiations that have gone down because you would be like, that's absurd it's absurd it doesn't even make sense i actually feel bad for you ed that like you weren't asking for more than that you know it was so minimum i was just like i just just give me this 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 these three things they couldn't agree to any of them and basically it's just like you know an ignore and kind of put your head in the sand and you know um, shocking I, shocking that that's the reality yeah and i'm reading you know i'm going through i'm going back and forth with one of these people on this negotiation i'm like literally what you're saying shows me how little appreciation you have for any value that i bring to this show. right you could give a fuck if i'm on this show you know so i was like okay hey man you know i've been feeling a certain kind of way for a little while you know, just with feeling a little bit suffocated mm. and a little bit um, restricted with the amount of creativity and opportunities that I've brought in that have just kind of been like m muddled and mm. relationships have kind of been fucked up, like people who I brought into the situation, you know. And um, at the end of the day, man, I'm like, and through COVID, I started my own podcast, The Ebb and Flow. I really started working on like, okay, who is Ebbin? Yeah. Who the fuck is Ebbin? It's you another know? phase of that, yeah. of that journey. Yeah. And, um, you know, we talked about it last night a little bit, but the whole hot box and experience for me was a constant spiritual ego check, you know, because I would, I would come home some nights and I'd be like, man, I need to talk more. Fuck it, man. I need to establish myself because everybody needs to know how fucking smart and, you know, on point I am. And then I'd go, Ed, why do you need to know that? Why do you need that? Like, you're doing so much, you know? And this isn't, this show is Mike's. Mm -hmm. And right now, like, you have a really important role, which is just to create this space so that Mike can kind of flourish and blossom. Fuck it, nailed you know? it. Nailed it. I would have never even assumed... <clears throat> That you were second guessing your approach to it it was just it seemed very seamless and doubt is one of my lifetime martial arts partners dude you know mm. going oh that's a fucking killer man that's a beast you know and um but the only way to overcome that is just keep taking steps forward yeah you know walk towards it yeah um so you know man it's all unfolding beautifully, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Sure is. And I've spent my, li my, the la my life after football, I've spent the last five years meditating every day, doing deep inner work, man, unraveling shit that I didn't even know was there, mm. coming to terms with myself, letting go of pain. And it's like it's here because I, I just had, I you know, my, my inbox is flooded with messages and I read one the other yesterday of this dude who said, man, I just have to tell you, it's so inspiring to watch you walk through this thing without ego, mm. without anger, so full of just professional. And I'm like, because, man, you know, that's at the end of the day, that's all there needs to be. You know, we got to keep this clean. They can do whatever the fuck they want to do, man. Mm. you know. The, re the truth of everything will will set us all free and it will reveal everything i don't lie yeah exactly dude you know don't lie. and uh i guess me taking that step to acknowledge the situation on that mountaintop 
was really the first step in that. And uh, I mean, that's why literally why you're here. We saw that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I'm hitting him up. Yeah. You know. And honestly, man, where we are right now, I don't feel like my soul, my heart, I don't really want to put out into the universe that I want to surround myself with people who don't appreciate me. Yeah. What does that What does that say to yourself if you do go back? It, it show I totally align with what you're saying. Yeah. I've had a similar. I've had similar feelings in some some business in the music business especially. Uh huh. And I would I swallow imagine. so much pride. Oh my God. To yeah. be, and 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 pride isn't. That's not the right word because I'm working to. Right. I think pride's stupid. You know, right. like, and I, I never used to think that way, yeah. but that's yeah. where I, what I do now. But I would, I mean, one in particular, just like a really who's who cool guy. And like, it was really the only one in the end. I've been independent my whole journey. So it was really the only like who's who motherfucker that would be like, yep, Mike, you know, Mike's, yeah. Mike's next, whatever. Like, and I felt so much value with the association. Right. Uh -huh. But then as time went on, I realized like, I'm literally just like I'm interchangeable to this guy, mm, yeah. and like I would. That's painful. I have I have amazing awareness on like a lot of shit, and I really take pride in my awareness. I knew that, but I chose to not. It was weird. It was like this one, like the self awareness is the hardest, I guess. But yeah. you know, I wouldn't. I'd be able to have that gauge on everything, but I couldn't gauge myself. Where I was like, you're not appreciated here, and like this guy doesn't really give a fuck. Mm -hmm. So you're you're essentially just holding on to this because. If you really boil that down, it comes from a place of like a little bit of doubt, deep Definitely. down, some self doubt. Like, oh, I need this affiliation. Yeah, yeah. I need this opportunity. Yeah. And you know, it is a cat and mouse game, business, and playing the right, playing the right lane. Like, there's a lot of that, you know. But I've just learned to lead with love and lead with like That's love, it, loving yourself and Always, respecting bro. everyone. And you know, um, but yeah, like when you said that, I, I've I literally had that very recently. I was yeah. just like. Oh, I can upend. This is when I moved from LA. We kind of just seven years. We're like, yo, we're leaving, and we fucking we don't. We're like nomads right now. We've been living, you know, every two months in these places. Granted, we're living in nice places. Yeah. But that gone with the wind feeling, where I was just like, I don't need any of these people. Like, I make yeah. the music in my fucking room. Yeah, you know. Bro. And it's right when you said that, it's exactly how it felt. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well. I'll say this, you know, I went back. So they, you know, they basically they basically pushed out the the group of the core of people who really created the show. Mm. Just just like energetically, like we don't want you here. Mm. You know. That's what they they didn't say that directly, but that's what they created. Myself, our director, our producer, the, these three three core people who really created hotboxing um they really just energetically pushed us out and moved us to the edges you know mm. um i mean it's a pure lack of taste so they <laughs> like I, I wonder if they watched the show like they probably didn't well that's know? part you know they probably i don't produce it and put it on but they don't sit there and actually consume it yeah to I understand the value yeah yeah well, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, maybe down the line. We'll Proper really business 101, that. even if that is the case, right? Say they're very busy and have so much shit going on. Take a pulse on the fucking consumers. Yeah, yeah. It would have been 99.99999, yes, to yeah. bring Evan back. Yeah. You know, like, it's yeah. simple, you know? I actually went and we recorded an episode with Jake Paul. And it was beautiful. I saw Mike for the first time in probably 10 months. He gave me a huge hug. It was so good to see him. I told him how proud I was of his performance in the fight with Roy Jones. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, dude, it's amazing, man, to see like where you've come from and be on this journey with you. And he looked so he looked good and he looked happy and healthy. Um, so it was great to see Mike, but it really felt weird. You know, there's this new set. Hate it. And I'm like just, i'm being honest yeah i mean <laughs> you know it. it it's there's definitely a vibe with hot boxing man it's huge vibe it's fucking og it's you know you're in the you're in the fucking concrete block you're in the trench yeah that, like you know it's just it's, it's a smoke little room. small room yeah everyone's getting contact high yeah no one knows if he's gonna fucking lose his marbles Mike's on something or just or the say minute. the most prophetic yeah. shit ever like it's just the dynamic it's just yeah. like so yeah raw 
And I just sat down there, and there's Jake Paul, and they've got Zab Judah and Mike, and oh, man. we start this interview, and I was thinking to myself, like, this just doesn't feel right, you know? It doesn't feel right. Some things happened where I had some realizations about the email negotiations I had been through, and then what this dude, Mike's partner, says to me, and I'm like, fuck, dude, this just doesn't smell right at all. Mm. So I went home that night, uh, sent an email. It's like really professional. Like, hey, guys, I need some clarity on these things that you said because mm-hmm. um, I can't work for free if that's what this is. Like, I can't really wait to be paid. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let me know. I feel like today was a great first day, whatever, but this is where I'm at. And I need clarification. They send me back a one sentence email responding to this one thing. And I'm like, wow. what the fuck? And I didn't, I literally, I haven't heard from them since. It's so and it bothered crazy. me, you know, because he mentioned this, this rotating co host thing. And I was like, you know, if they had said that to me up front, I might have felt, you know, it probably would have bothered me. Mm. But it was it would have at least been honest right but for them to like kind of backdoor this rotating co-host thing yeah and then as it goes on to be a, a success which it's like that can't go under the radar in this like it's something that's like becoming a cultural not even the numbers are the numbers which growing and it's already big but the cultural impact of it and the vibe like it felt like something that could win an award you know like totally just dude. like has a raw ass unique fe- fucking everything about it yeah. you know yeah so totally. to then have that success and be on that wave talk about a vibe killer yeah. like yeah. you know that they're not yeah you know it's just yeah it's, it's just like oh i don't get you it. guys don't appreciate you guys just don't really appreciate what we do yeah i don't you know? get it so hey man here we are i'm fucking stoked dude you know um yeah i'm interested in you know raising the fucking level of human consciousness yeah dude. you know that's that's like what's that's what's on your radar yeah for like what's in front of you yeah how to live better how to be the greatest version of yourself mm-hmm. so that you and your little magnificent particle of the fucking universe can go out and spread that vibration out into your people you know now how much how much uh has it gone exponentially higher your level of spirituality and just the, even the things you say right like if you if you reverse back to who you were on year three in the nfl how different did you have these same thoughts or was it to a lesser ex- i always had the uh innate sort of curiosity understanding sort of yearning for it i was yeah. always the shaman of my teams there you go okay you know Without even really knowing it. Like, I was friends with the DBs. I was friends with the quarterbacks. Yeah. I was friend Like, everybody kind of gathered around. Of course, around, I get it. Yeah, you know? a million percent. Um, so, I always sort of, I always, this has been my role my whole life, even in my family. You know, I was kind of like the energy center of my family. Wow. I was the energy center of all the football teams I was ever on. You know, I was the vocal leader. You were a very emotional kid growing up, too, just sensitive. Yeah, and- super. I mean, my dad has said to me since I was a little kid, he's like, Eb, you're so sensitive. Mm. You know, I'm so sensitive. Yeah. Dude. I feel everything like fucking a thousand times probably what the normal person. Feels. Yeah. Honestly, I've become so much more sensitive, man. Uh-huh. And it's, it's felt you would almost, the old me would say, that sucks. Right, right. But now... I'm I'm hoping to become more and more sensitive. You know, yeah. I'll it's just, break down into tears at the drop of a hat. Yeah, I can too. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's it's have a crying contest, though, dude. Yeah, no, it is. It is. I do like. There's so much shit. Like I've taken inventory of that. Like I I cry looking at my like yeah. just shit on the like anything yeah, that's if someone's happy, if someone's happy and it's moving them, I it's like I feel a portion of that. You know, and I never ever. I guess I was programmed to shut that off uh-huh yeah it really was yeah. like we came from a really egocentric like neighborhood you know like yeah. just yeah northeast italians i'm not yeah. italian but like in yeah, this yeah. area when and like everyone's just like a tough guy and everyone's yeah. you know gonna be a celebrity and you know yeah, all these dude. things but 
Well, that's a young that's a young man's life too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but just like even like regionally, like uh -huh, yeah, the athletes yeah. were the coolest. Yeah, like it wasn't about like who yeah, can the sing and like and the, you know yeah, the choir dude like that and, was it yeah, you're the athlete yeah. like or not and you're just yeah. like on the outside yeah, yeah you know yeah, and sure. i was a, you know i was an athlete my whole life so yeah man it, it was it's i can vividly remember like seeing shit and like getting a little emotional and be like be able to like turn it off you know and now it's like i've taken inventory of it recently and i'm i can't control it at all it's powerful. if there's something yeah there's just something and it really, I think it was just going through pain yourself. Yeah. Really. Big you know, time. like I had a pretty coddled, like I had, you know, we were a blue collar, regular family, but angels of parents. Uh -huh. Like my mom's like a fucking, what do you need? Uh huh. You know, yeah. like, and my dad was just the man, you know, yeah. like a real, just a good solid motherfucker. You yeah. know, never tried to do wrong by anyone. Yeah, it's awesome. So, and I had all these breaks and like, I was just the best athlete there and ended up going on and playing and shit. And there was no hardship. Like, even though I did have, like, little things in jealousy or things in school, like, I got kicked out of school for fighting, you know, when I was younger. Never viewed it as a hardship. I was always right. Fuck them, mm -hmm. you know? And so my point is, until I became, like, I didn't wasn't a man until I went through something that yeah. made me sack up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really didn't have to. I, I got injured, and that's the first time I had to sack up. And then uh -huh. I somehow landed in music, which was, again, felt very lucky. Right. So... You know, again, the hardship didn't even last long. I was like, boom, all right, yeah, I'm into this. And it worked. Yeah. So then, you know, like having relationships, the first time I had like heartbreak, mm. that changed me forever, yeah. Yeah. you know? But when you reference oh, yeah. the pain that you go through, and I think even the, the element of age and like Mike Tyson, like Mike Tyson's fucking 3,000 years old, man. Yeah. He has 3,000 years of pain. Yeah. Like in, in regards to people have like some people have some shit go on and it will haunt their next 10 years yeah and mike probably has eight thousand of those yeah you know what i'm saying so like yeah. you know i didn't grow up until i was fucking 25 26 until and oh, i might yeah. never i might not have done grown up till i'm 31 if yeah. the shit didn't happen to me you know yeah. but when you talk about your time in the nfl and you're like it was dark and painful like i feel like a lot of people probably feel the same way that go through that that play in the nfl i mean there's oh, different yeah. versions of your story but yeah. it's a lot of things that fans i talk about sports fans and shit and i actually try to shine this light on them there's so much ego in being a sports fan nowadays oh, that's interesting. like we pay you 40 million bro <laughs> right, fucking right. shack up and play like yeah. bro kyrie irving doesn't want to fucking play right now he's yeah has his own yeah as a human being which overrides playing in fucking empty arena basketball yeah. like and the fans who have, you know, their tax dollars are paying it in their head, but right. they're like, yo, well, you're indebted to us because, yeah. no, that's just not how it is. Yeah. Like, but there's so much, ath like, there's this athlete to fan dichotomy and, like, the power spectrum. Like, huh? fans feel very, yeah. tell them how to live their life yeah. and judge them and literally throw as much shade you possibly can yeah. um, publicly about people. It's yeah. just a weird dynamic of life that, like, you forget that, like, Yo, this is a human, like, we're human beings. Yeah. And there's no, there's no fucking way you have any idea or say yeah. in anyone's other, anyone else's, like, trajectory. Like, just the, so, it just so happens that they're talented in a way that gives them a public profile. Right. But I've always had, it's something I try to speak out about because I have a lot of friends who are athletes. I mean, being friends with Johnny through this whole thing has been hard. Oh, yeah. I used to write back yeah. to people, like, fuck you, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, because I know him like he's yeah. a real fucking like a really good dude, probably way better of a person than you are, yeah. you know, I love um, I love and him, that's man. that's how I, I, you know, I had to even fucking work my way out of that. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's totally, interesting man. sports and warriors. You said that warrior yeah. like there's just this gladiator element to it. Yeah. Where it's like, dude, these are human beings like, yeah, yeah, you know, one of the most powerful. I don't know if we want to if you want to wrap up soon yeah for this segment yeah we'll, we'll, we'll continue. continue tomorrow yeah this will be a rolling uh episode. yeah for sure but um you know it's amazing what the media creates you know mm -hmm. and especially with mike tyson with johnny manzel you know you oh, sent yeah. me that episode to listen to yep and uh i was thinking about it because these are all structures like these are all cultural culturally created illusions mm. you know at the end Absolutely. of the day johnny manzel 
why would he feel anything but pride or a sense of accomplishment for everything he did? Right. Any shame or guilt he feels is only based on outside influence. That's that's a really know? great fucking point, though, because that's just something, especially in this athlete world, but it happens, I guess, in life. Like, the failures, like, yeah. the failures just override an yeah. importance to yourself, one, yeah. and then outwardly, too. Like, everyone wants to, like, it's like yeah. the failure is just so much more of the story. But, like, right. dude, Johnny... <laughs> Bro, He's a Heisman you're winner, fucking bro. Fucking won the Heisman. One of the most electrifying players of all time. So even know? if it fucking ended immediately, which yeah. it kind of did more or less, like yeah. probably would have been better off for him, you know. But like he had to, it. No, I take that back because he had to go through and be like, oh, yeah. he actually was like, yo, I don't really belong here. Like right. I, I don't, I don't fucking feel like doing this. Yeah, shit. and what's wrong with that? So what the fuck is wrong with that? Yeah, what's you wrong know? With that? Or like me, you know, in my in my little microcosm of that. I played six years in the NFL, dude. I was first team all Pac-10, all American in college. Yep. Like team captain, loved and appreciated by all my teammates, you yep. know, throughout my career, respected by coaches. Here I am, I'm coming out of a six year career, and I'm going, that wasn't enough. And I'm having conversations with people going, Why'd you quit so early? Why'd you retire so terrible. young? And I'm like, Whoa what like when am i supposed to feel good about what i did mm. you know and it's like it's a great point how many how many guys have played in the nfl period the like three thousand the percentile is like three thousand dudes have played in the nfl in the history of the league yeah. yeah how many guys have won the fucking heisman like a hundred dudes i have this conversation with almost all my guests it's and like I, yeah it, you know it's uh, it's this thing about being an athlete where you like you know, it's kind of what made you a great athlete. It's yeah. like, what's next? It ain't right. enough. Yeah. I yeah. need more, you know? Yeah. Um, Tom it's, Brady's fucking for, it ain't enough. Yeah. Ten <laughs> Super Bowls, bro. That motherfucker is fucking feeding at the fucking mouth, ready to win again. You I know? know. Like, it's, you know, so it is what it is. Yeah. But, dude, like. But when does that start that, to hinder you in your own life absolutely. process? Absolutely. And then, know? dude, I, Tom, listen, I'd love to. But if you want to come on and discuss, the epic, um, no, like I don't fucking, be I can't believe it. I don't, uh -huh. I cannot fucking believe that he's still playing and doing it. It's like amazing. where Tom, and, and, a, I, I say what you want about Tom. He's yeah. always been one of my favorites. Yeah. He's, he's a complete he's like, savage. He's like, I guess he's like, he's this, I mean, I'm from that area. I'm Tom Brady yeah, yeah. The, in the DNA. You're a new Englander. It, dude. Right. But it's like, I get, he, you could dislike him. Cause it's just like, why the fuck? Fuck this guy why is he always winning the? and like how but like if you really have any respect for the game oh. i think at this point everyone's just like wow just bow down to his, the greatness you know greatest of all time yeah for sure without a doubt yeah. um but my point is i mean when i look at sports i've really gone from being balls deep on the field like this is it was my fucking existence uh-huh yeah. you know just like yeah, it, it was bro. my existence for sure and getting out of that like dude when i when I look back at sports now, I'm like, can't believe people do this their whole lives. I know, I know. One fucking crazy. planet Earth. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to end. You don't know You don't know how long you got here. You want to say you spent 99% of your time on a grass field in tight pants <laughs> wrestling around with other dudes? It's so true, man. Fucking putting your body, the one body that you have as a gift, like, feels like a gift it's to me. It's a gift, man. This thing's and a gift. You want to fucking torture it yeah. for the majority of your existence. For really not much personal gain. Like, I realized my whole football career was based on me showing the world how fucking big and scary and fearsome I was. Yeah, I could do it. Look at and me. then I left, and I was like, whoa, dude. There's still people out there who don't even know who I am. Who yeah. don't even care? Never would. I'll I'll meet people every day who have no fucking idea about it. It doesn't matter to them at all. So it comes back to me. It matters. Am to I you. enough for yeah. myself? Yeah. And as athletes, that's kind of you know for me, that's what I see in guys coming out of their careers. It's like, can you make that transition to being like, 
I'm enough for myself, dude, no matter what I fucking did. Because you see these old guys. Yeah. There's a lot of old guys who are stuck in it. Oh, yeah. You know? I, I don't know if you saw this. It really struck me, and it's a great example of, of this issue to me. There's a, a great, an all-time wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. He played around Roger Staubach's era. Uh, I forget his name. Drew Peterson, maybe? I, I can't remember. But it was a couple of years ago, and they, they had a camera on him during the announcement of Hall of Fame inductees. And he's there with his whole family, and he's watching the TV. And, of course, they don't announce his name. And he's a Hall of Fame caliber receiver, mm -hmm. you know. And he slams his fist down on the table and goes, look at what they're doing. Look at what they did to me again. And I'm thinking to myself, God, what a tragedy. Mm. You literally gave your whole life to this game, and now you're letting them take more from you. Yeah, he's prisoner to it. You're a prisoner in it, man. It's like, fuck, man. Dude, you did something incredible, regardless of what anybody thinks. Like, people, people can hate all day. You know, but you made it, you climbed to the top of that mountain. There's you know? something about legacy here. I'm actually interested on in your take on, on legacy. Mm. Because in America? No, just like in... the term, like, yo, what do you do it for, man? Like, my fucking legacy for my kids. Right. Like, right. For like, That's what know. Jake Paul said. Of course. And he's 23, and I'm going, one day, bro, you're going to wake up and you're going, what about me? Yeah. You know, I mean, what do I want to do? A lot of people would argue the opposite. He's very selfish, which. I, but at the same time, well, look, see, that's kind of an interesting. At, there's a thin, there's a the, very thin layer between selfishness and self awareness. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, dude, to be honest, I'm a fan of the kid. Like he, the, the way they, hey, bro, the way they, like what, say whatever you want. Yeah, the way they stimulate and have maximized their shit. It's mind boggling. It's they're doing they're doing shit that's paving the way for yeah. possibilities i mean i don't follow the shit at all but yeah I'm I, like, I, I got respect for that because it's like you turn literally nothing into something and again and again that's what yeah. they him and his brother they do yeah. really well like yeah um what the fuck was the point so se like when i say selfish like even jake would probably say yeah man like uh -huh. this whole world is revolving around yeah. jake paul how are we doing this shit like there's <laughs> yeah. tons of ego in yeah. it yeah. You know, I was probably like I was a version of that when I was 23. Well, like definitely, in the way yeah. I thought, I wasn't really thinking about anything other than what the fuck was going on for me. Yeah. You know, but a selfish answer, in my opinion, is legacy. Yeah. And people will be like, "What do you mean? It's about your kids." Uh -huh. But it's like, dude, no one gives a fuck about my accomplishments. Yeah. Once you do it, you did it. You yeah. made people feel it. Now there's an impact. Uh -huh. and and that's that's amazing right yeah but it's still an interpretation of the past yeah, yeah it's like your interpretation of like oh he was a great man he did this he did that yeah. you know what i mean like in my opinion the answer legacy like i never resonated with it really because no. it's just like it's false dude. it's hard to articulate what i mean exactly but it's not it, it that means oh my leg like look at the importance of what i've done mm-hmm yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like, who you are. Your leg like that's who, who you dude, are. Dude, how about you just be a fucking amazing dad to your kids right. and they'll fucking remember you for that forever. Yeah. They don't yeah. fucking care about how many touchdowns you had. Like Well, you know, I think it's um a lot of people live in a state of lacking and like my life will be better when I do this. Yeah. You know. And when you're constantly in that state and your life is just about Yeah getting the job, getting the car, getting the house. And when you've had that experience, like being a 21-year-old kid, being cut a check for $4 million Sheesh. as a rookie, my life has changed. No one in my family has ever had this amount of money yeah. ever. I got to do whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And here I am, years into that, realizing what it is. I've achieved this dream that I set out from the time I was a little kid. Right. I made this money. I have all the access I could possibly ever imagine having. And yet I'm still not happy? What? Mm. So it's not about that. It's not about that. It's about something else. Yeah. What is it about? What the fuck is my heart saying? Why am I sitting here in this room with these people where I thought this was going to be the thing? Mm -hmm. This was going to be the moment where I'd go, I've arrived. And mm -hmm. here I am and I'm like somewhere else. Yeah. Why? It's because you have to live from the fucking innate truth that's inside of you. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. This thing, this ineffable thing, this vibration that comes out of us, yep. you know, and we all have it, but Absolutely. people are, you know, like you were saying, being up here in Montana, it's like you're in a, you're in a meditative state just waking up every day. Yeah, you know? really. Because there's, the vibration is so clear here. I don't think everyone, like I have a very, like, my, our listenership is it's great because they're really getting turned on to this shit through I love this that. discussion. It's but so it's important. coming like it's coming from a jock place in a lot of ways, my following, or it's coming from and well, like dude, athletes, you because you've crossed the first threshold, which is mastering the physical being. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and it's so sexy for other men too. Uh -huh. Like men are, you know, you you idolize the athletes because you're yeah. like, fuck, how do they do that yeah. shit? You know? Yeah. I wish I could do that shit. Yeah. Um, but for the, like I don't I don't even I'm just starting to become wowed by like the human existence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I really I'm trying to be very open about it cuz you know, it, yeah. it's it's a it's a wow thing. And oh. when you talk about frequencies and every, like I would I would like 3 year, 4 years ago I'd be like, "What the fuck are they talking about frequencies?" <laughs> You're a person, I'm a person, right? What the fuck is everyone talking yeah, about? Yeah, and then sure. you like I was just so ignorant and just to what just how I was living, like I didn't need to dive into any of this shit. I was getting wins, and it was just yep, yeah, ro rolling, we were rocking and rolling, you know. Yeah. And then going into it, and then you know had a tough time, but then went down this path, and I felt it right away. Like I mm. could be happy, uh -huh. you know. Like, but look, if you listen, people listening, like start looking into how crazy life is exactly. Though, Ugh. you know, like it's pretty fucking nuts. Like you said it earlier, bro. It's a fucking miracle we're here. Yeah, it is. We take it for granted being in this body. It's a fact. There are a million things happening in your body right now just to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. And it's just happening. You don't do any it's, of it. It's nuts. You literally wake up and you fucking go do stuff. It's nuts. You I, don't do anything. Bro, I, like psychedelics Psychedelics played a part in this for me. It that became so clear one yeah. night in Joshua Tree. Uh -huh. Like, I don't I do not do mushrooms and, like, abuse them and, like, just be like, yo, I'm going to take a bunch and, like, be around these yeah. fucking You can't really because they'll I, fuck you nah, up. Nah, and I, 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 like, respect that, yeah. you know, because I've had yeah. a friend who's had an issue with a psychedelic and it was very eye-opening. Like, this uh -huh. shit is not a game. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a game. But, dude, like. <laughs> not a game. It's dog. not a fucking game. But what I will think, even through that, is even that was necessary for uh -huh. him. He's be you know, like as long as you stayed strong, he's better for it now. Yeah, you know, definitely, because um, that was a lesson you had to learn. Yeah, so like yeah. Joe Rogan said a thing I really connected with. He's just like, there's no such thing as a bad trip. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking telling you yeah. everything you want to know. Yeah. You might not like it. Yeah, you might. But it's not gonna like tell it, you then. exactly what you know. That's and, the thing, and we could talk about this in the next segment too, because I'd love to di dive yeah. in. I'm a big fan of psilocybin, DMT. You know, Mike had his spiritual awakening with the toad and 5-MeO-DMT and all of these things, LSD, whatever it is, they drop you down into the fucking center of yourself, dude. And you might be confronted with some shit that you really don't want to see. Yeah. You're not ready to acknowledge it, but the plant's going, this is who you are. Yeah. This is where it is. How fucking crazy is that? <laughs> That's the thing. Some, I know. Some shit fucking secretes out of a toad <laughs> yeah. and it fucking shows you god like what the fuck yeah, is that bro. so if you're not wowed by that then you got to wake the fuck up yeah you know what i mean yeah. i'm i'm just i'm not saying that from a preaching perspective i'm literally just getting there and i'm like thank yeah. god oh, you know man. i wish i i wish i happened 10 years ago yeah but well all the shit you do man it all adds up you know you totally. talk about your great gratitude journal talk about meditating absolutely you know, this is a so, pure, this life is a purification process, man. You know, and it takes a long time to get to the point of true clarity. It's, you know? it's interesting how life starts out naturally and your most, you know, form, like formidable years where you're like formative years where you're, you're actually at the mercy of your circumstances. Yeah. Like totally. you're, that's actually when you're completely codependent. Yeah. So, and you have no power over who your parents are, or how they're going to treat you. Yeah, you just drop. So isn't in. that really interesting that to be like that's the natural course? So when you say life is washing it away, kind of makes a lot of sense. Like yeah. you're going to be given whatever you're going to be given because it's not your choice. It's yeah. your fucking nine or ten. Yeah. Scientifically speaking, like the brain, they say it's your most formative. Like there's so much. Oh yeah. You're you're the. Oh, I'm going to butcher. 
yeah, neuroplasticity, like you have so much space for learning. Yeah. Your, your brain is just becoming active and looking for new things and knowledge. Yeah. So if you're getting fed a bunch of horse shit, it's out of your control. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's just crazy to think that that's actually the, the actual way it's naturally yeah. happens where you're at the mercy of nature. Yeah. Because it is. Yeah. And then you, it's your job to wash yourself clean, yeah. dry and clean of the, of, you know, whatever you're dealt. Totally, man. Well, it's, it's not only it's your parents, it's culture, it's Absolutely. school. You get programmed and then you have to deprogram yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And that's really what life is about. Yeah. And some of us are more lucky than others, dude. Totally. You know? Like some of us are, are, and maybe this goes into past lives. You've done a lot of living. You've lived a lot of lives. Yeah. Rectified a lot of karma in your soul cycle, dude. And here you are in this, in this existence. And you might have come in with a pretty clean slate. But that means you have to be accountable to your purpose on this planet of being a beacon of light. Yeah. So that people can see that. Yeah. See what the possibilities are, you know. That's what I'm trying to do, G. You're doing a good fucking job. Thanks, man. So are you, dude. This is really fun. Thanks, I, man. I feel really stoked to be here. Yeah. This is, uh, I mean, day two. This is, we'll probably hang out for a few more days here yeah. before you guys head back. Yeah. Get a hike in. Yeah. We'll get a, we'll make sure we get a big bite out of nature while we're out here. Yeah, Do something. Sure. We got, we got a skeet range down there. We'll go shoot it if we want. I love that. Um, I was a, I was a state shotgun champion when I was uh, 17 years old in California. Of course you were. <laughs> You're like a modern day that. fucking like lumberjack <laughs> slash, I don't even know. It's insane. Of course. Crazy. Want to go chop some wood? We got a wood chop. I, dude, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> you got to start up our next fire. But yeah. we'll uh, hopefully we'll do this again. But if not, Definitely. man. No, what, dude, uh, let's do it, man. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna. I'm going to take you guys through my breath work. And I'm fired up. Yoga session. It takes Evan. I've been trying to. I preach on this podcast. Like so many of my fans have been turned into. Turned on to meditation. All I my DMs. That, most of it's like, yo, thanks for fucking putting me on this shit. Amazing, for real. bro. My friends, they're all on it too, but in their own ways. Uh -huh. But they all big league meditation. As soon as Evan gets into town, they're like, yep, let's do it. <laughs> like, you'd be the guy to get him over. Bro, so let's perfect, do it. Dude, yeah. It's perfect, dude. It's perfect. You're my beacon. You're my yeah, beacon of light. So exactly. Just get these guys through. I love it, dude. Yeah. Thank um, you, man. But man, thanks for coming through. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be many more times, but it's been a yeah, great conversation. Great start. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Thank Let's you. go get some dinner. Let's do it.